Hi. Hi. My name is Miss Amy. I'm one of the children's librarians here at Monroe County Public Library, and today we're going to do a sensory craft. Ooh. And I have a little green screen <laughs> glitch going on, so it's kind of disappearing a little bit. But it is a sensory leaf project that requires um, pretty inexpensive, hopefully on hand um, supplies. So. I'll go over the supplies real quick and go from there. So I have just a sandwich bag. I have something that has like a double lock because kids seem to like to test their strength and squish things until stuff explodes. So um, if your kiddo is like that or as a grown up, if you're like that, I would probably get something um, with a zipper plus, plus the, um, other locking protection on here like this one. Um, just a forewarning. That paint goes places that it probably shouldn't be. Uh, so Ziploc baggie, sandwich baggie, and then I have a black piece of construction paper that already has the leaf shape cut out um, of this. And before you uh, marvel at my cutting skills, I used a, something called an Ellison die machine, which has little steel uh, metal outlines of shapes and you use pressure, a pressure thing, a little pressure gear to kind of smash the shape into construction paper. So it does all the hard work for you. Um, but you could take chalk, white chalk, and kind of doodle the shape um, that you want your leaf to be and um, cut it out just like this. And this is just um, the size of the sandwich bag. Oops disappearing. The other thing that you could do prior to doing um, your leaf shapes, I always love going um, to the parks, hiking trails, um, nature centers around here. There's tons of stuff to do outside um, with social distancing in effect. Um, but kind of take, take a gander around and look at different leaves that you find, pick out your favorite ones that are on the ground, and then kind of take them home and talk about what colors you see the leaves changing, um, what colors you find the leaves to be type things, and your favorite leaf shape, and then you know trace it on the paper there. So kind of expand on this activity if you want to, um, and kind of plug nature outdoors, um, how colors change and affect how colors change in the fall and why they do, things like that. Um, so again, plastic sandwich bag, a black piece of construction paper with a leaf shape cut out. And then the next step is I have little um, cups of paint, different colors. So for the one that I have finished, I used purple. I, I don't know if you can tell from here, purple, green, yellow, oops, yellow gold, brown, and orange. So pretty much I gathered what I in my mind think of when I think of fall colors. So you can kind of do whatever theme you want. So you want to make like a pink and blue or turquoise and white leaf, go for it. Um, but this is just a good opportunity to kind of talk about um, why leaves change in the fall and then fall off the trees and then come back again later. So once you have your leaf, cut out. It's as simple as you can mix these steps up, it's fine. But I already have this taped on here. I would probably put a piece of tape right here and right here and open your baggie. And this step I would, I, you know, let, let your kiddo have, a, have a, um, a chance at getting their hands messy. It's just, this is just tempera paint, so it's washable, um, nothing fancy, but I have a plastic spoon and I just scoop up the paint that's in the cup and flop it. And I do that in different locations. Um, I guess in theory, if you were super true to keeping the colors um, clean, 
you could wash the spoon each time that you dip it, but I honestly just kept going. <laughs> You're mixing the color, so it's kind of looking like Mardi Gras on my spoon. So I'm doing purple right now, and then brown. And it doesn't take a lot of paint at all, just enough to spill a, um, so much baggy so you can kind of see well in theory if my if the library ghost weren't in effect so there's no rhyme or reason to where I'm plopping it it's just a way for them to kind of spread out a little bit and then I'm going to do my gold gold yellow okay and then green so the other thing what other shapes or things you think of when you think of fall. There's pumpkins, of course, so you could do a pumpkin shape. Um, you could do corn, but leaves are a pretty easy given with this one because leaves naturally change colors in the fall. Um, so this is about working a little bit of um, color lessons into it but you can still have fun. So pumpkins would do, if you wanted to do a spooky colored ghost, you could do that, um, or a bat or anything like that. So I put my paint in my bag. I taped my leaf shape on the, um, the baggie. And now it's just kind of letting the kiddos go. I love this. It's a really good kind of um, sensory activity. But there you are. So you can kind of see it actually worked out pretty well. I didn't add like baby lotion or oil. Um, sometimes you can do that to mimic. Um, oh, what are they called? I think the sensory bottles. So um, this was again just tempera paint, non fancy, the cheap stuff that you can get at Dollar Tree, um, and not a lot. This one has a little bit more in it. Um, but again, the only precaution is just to make sure that your baggie is um, customized to your kiddos' strengths. <laughs> it would take for them to get a face full of paint, but if they do, it's not the end of the world. Um, art is messy, creativity is messy, um, which is sometimes the best part. So now that we did our very simple craft, I wanted to do a quick game with y'all. So I have a basket of apples, because apples are another thing that reminds me of fall. And I'm going to get them lined up here. I'm going to ask some questions. And you're going to tell me what ones look different from the other. So I have, we'll just do three, because I have a puppet friend that wants to say hello too. OK, so I have a big old basket. Move it back a little bit. There we go. A big old basket of apples. So I'm going to get apple pie after this. And I need to sort through which ones are good and which ones are bad. So from here, I have three apples. What color is this apple? Green. What color is this apple? Yellow. What color is this apple? Red. And there are a variety of other colored apples out there, believe it or not, but these are the three main ones that I think of when I think of fall, fall picking apples. So do all of them have leaves on the stem? Can you tell? Does this one have a leaf on the stem? Yes. Does this one have a leaf on the stem? Nope, it doesn't. Does this one have a leaf on the stem? Okay, so before we bake our apple pie, before I go bake my apple pie, I want to make sure there are no icky worms or buggies in my apples because I don't need that type of protein in my, in my apple pie. Do you see any of the three apples on here that have a worm? Does the red one have a worm that you can see? No. Does the green one? That you can see, no. 
The yellow one. The yellow one has a worm. What color is the worm? Can you tell? It's a dark green. So this one, would you put it in your apple pie? No, probably not. So I'm gonna put that one away and I'll dig some more. But thank you. So I'm gonna make a little apple pie for my puppet friend actually. So two of these small ones will probably be enough to make a little apple tart. So thank you for helping me. So I'm gonna put this over to the side and I'll introduce you to my little puppet friend that wants to say hello. I have my little fox friend here, which is another fox critter. So, since we live together, you know, he lives in my backyard, um, and we see each other every day because I feed him apples, for one thing. I'm going to take off his mask, but that's only because we live together. If he was a stranger or a wolf I had, or wolf, a fox that I hadn't met, I would keep my mask on. But he really appreciates you helping uh, sort those apple out because he really doesn't like the, uh, the sliminess of, of worms. That's not good. It's not what you want when you're eating your apple pie. But I wanted to do a sign language song for you, and then we're going to head out, and uh, I'll see you for the next craft. But we're going to do something called Come Under My umbrella, umbrella with Sign Language, or try to at least. So I'm going to use my puppet friend, and he's going to teach you some sign language, okay? And if his little paws aren't really communicating the signs that well, I'll just do it. How about he'll do it, and then I'll do it, and then we'll do it together, <laughs> okay? I wish his little, he's just so happy. He just can't, he can't keep his mouth closed. He's just always surprised. Okay, so the first sign is umbrella. So you're going to make two fists, okay, and put one paw on top of the other, so like this, okay, just like that. And then you're going to go up. Okay, so boop, boop, that means umbrella. Umbrella. Okay, so the next sign that will go over is rain. So rain is pretty easy. You just do jazz hands. So he's just going to wave his hands down. <laughs> so this means rain. Okay, thunder is my favorite because it's super dramatic. Is it your favorite too? Can you tell me? He likes lightning, which we'll learn next. But thunder is where you make two fists, okay? And then you shake them above your head very dramatically, like, ah, no, I'm out of chocolate chip cookies. No, so you want to try? Can you do thunder for me? <laughs> He's trying. He, he has very short paws and limbs, but he tries his best. And then lightning, which is Mr. Fox's favorite, is you make a zigzag in the sky. So with your fingers, like that. So can you do it, Mr. Fox? Kind of looks like his jazz hands, but he tries his best, okay? So we're gonna put that all together. I'm gonna put him on my shoulder because that's one of his favorite spots to be. We're gonna put all those together in a song called Come Under My Umbrella. You ready? Come under my umbrella, umbrella, umbrella. Come under my umbrella, it's starting to rain. There's thunder, lightning, and <laughs> thunder and lightning. Come under my umbrella, it's starting to rain. They're doing a disappearing act on me. Your little ears disappearing on me. Okay. So I appreciate hanging out with me and Mr. Fox and learning a little bit about colors and how to mix them. And hopefully um, I see you soon. If not, keep watching um, until next time. Have a great day. Bye.